Hi guys, my name is Ashley. I am the creator behind Essentially Joyful and I'm super excited. And if I'm looking at the wrong spot on the screen, I'm sorry, but I'm super excited to be teaching this class today. This is something that I'm hugely passionate about. So I'm really excited that Oil Life was so generous in asking me to teach one. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I talk a lot about self-confidence and self-love. And I actually don't celebrate Valentine's Day, which I know, I know. I've been married for almost over 10 years. Um, but to me, I think it's way more important that we do things like celebrating ourselves and our own worthiness and the worthiness of those around us, just in human life in general. Um, because it's so beautiful and it's something we don't talk about all the time. And it's not just roses and chocolate, but the day-to-day -day stuff of learning to love our bodies, love ourselves, have the confidence to go out there and share essential oils or find the partner that we've been looking for or leave the partner that we're not looking for. Um, have the confidence to speak up for our needs, to be a better mother, to have all of these things in life that we need to achieve or want to achieve is, that's the day-to-day -day stuff. That's not Valentine's Day. That's our day-to-day -day stuff, right? Super cool. So let's talk a little bit about why self-confidence. Um, I think I went through a huge transition and I'll tell you my story to help you kind of understand why I think it's so important. I went through this huge transition when I had my first baby and um, I realized that I had been telling myself a lot of stories, that these stories weren't true necessarily, that maybe I didn't have enough time to have a doTERRA business or maybe I wasn't experienced enough to be a good mom, right? Or maybe um, I needed something to be complete, right? There was lots of stories that I told myself. But having children, actually ironically, was the thing that showed me that I actually had everything I needed already and that I just had to wrap my mind around something that my heart and my body knew already. But I think as women especially, and this is true for men as well, but especially women, we tend to learn a lot of stories, right? Stories from our childhood, stories from being a teenager, those first dating relationships, however it might be, first career choices that we make. And those stories might tell us that maybe we aren't enough that we're not capable we might have that first job that we get let go from or our first car accident or something like that and we start to tell ourselves maybe a story that's not necessarily true so today i want to talk about the stories that we tell ourselves how we can use essential oils and affirmations to break those story patterns and have a more productive more happy lifestyle that is full of abundance and self-love and how we can bring that all back home and also share it with other, others around us too. So I was actually researching this topic because even though it's something that I'm passionate about and I talk about essential oil blends and all of these different types of things, a friend I've done that for years, I was curious what the actual science on self-love was. And we know that you know now that we have so much more that we can learn about the brain and how our thought processes affect our actual body, that um, we've discovered a lot of things in the last decade or two about how our thoughts actually really will implement into like our body, right? If we say we can't do something, then our body is really happy to oblige us not being able to do something. And if we firmly, without a doubt, believe that we can do something, it's likely that we'll achieve that, something that we think that we can't do, or we'll be able to achieve it better, right? If we think that we can do it. But we know that if you're a perfectionist or if you're a type A personality or if you're really, really hard on yourself, and that's me, right? I have a really super type A personality that um, those people are actually at a higher risk of mental illness. And that's something I didn't know, actually. So it correlates to, you know, expect having these really, really high expectations, being really, really self-critical. And of course, it's not just ourselves either, right? We come out and say that, you know, self-critical people are also really self-critical of those around, are really critical of those around them too. So it affects everybody, our children, our spouse, our friends, our coworkers, all of those things. For me, the thing that was holding me back for a really long time, and I'll speak to the doTERRA business for a little bit because I know that some of you that might be listening to this might have a doTERRA business, is I thought that I wasn't worthy enough or capable or smart enough or connected enough, right, to be able to have a successful business. I said I was just going to do it as a side business. I was just going to have my oils paid for. And that held me back for so many years. So many years I spent ordering oils for myself and my family saying, oh, it's just my side business. I'll share with friends and family when they ask, but it's not going to be something I do full time or that I take serious because I don't have the connections for it. 
And that was totally just a story that I was telling myself. So when I realized those things in those first early years of motherhood, first year of motherhood, I realized a lot of things about how I was telling myself stories about how I wasn't capable of doing this or that, or I was telling myself stories about how my body wasn't capable of doing something, which came into a huge play about being able to get pregnant and having a baby in the first place that we can talk a little bit about. Um, I realized that a lot of things that I could do with essential oils and affirmations would clear those blocks for me. And we'll talk a little bit about those later on. We'll talk about affirmations and what essential oils I specifically used. But then I had this huge breakthrough moment and I read a book called Braving the Wilderness, which I totally recommend every single person listen to or read. It's by Brene Brown. So, so good. And it talks about just doing what you know is right, regardless of all of the other things out there. And Brene Brown wrote, has wrote a ton of different books. Pretty much all of them are amazing. But Braving the Wilderness is a really great one that I recommend. But I want to tell you guys a quote that she has. It's not actually from Braving, or Braving the Wilderness, but it's a really good one. So she says, I see now how owning our story and loving ourselves through the pro that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Isn't that powerful? The bravest thing we'll ever do is owning our own story and loving ourselves through the process of our story. And there's so many people out there who are searching for a different story, right? Or they want to achieve this one goal that will make them happy or this one pant size that will make them happy, right? That's some of the things that our diet culture tells us. If you were just a size six instead of a size eight, you would be happy, right? If you could just fit into that cute shirt at Nordstrom's, you'd be happy. Those are all complete and total lies to make us caught up in a goal that was always forever unreachable and to keep us playing it safe, right? Our subconscious, our reptile brain, it says, no, 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 that's scary. Let's not go there. Let's not change. Let's not do that because that's different and anything different is scary. So our brain kind of holds us back on its own thinking it's protecting us, but and then it's not really helping us that much. So why oils? When we're talking about self-love and confidence, there's a ton of different oils out there that can be extremely helpful. Now, I only speak to doTERRA essential oils. So the ones in your oil arsenal that you may have will go over like five or six of the really common ones that I love. And one of the biggest ones, and you'll notice that it's in all of my blends or most of my blends that I tell you guys about, it's actually bergamot. And bergamot helps us embrace our true self and increases our confidence. But the thing that I love about bergamot is that it really gently um, I think my video stopped. It really gently breaks through all of those boundaries and those shells and those glass ceilings that we've created for ourselves that say that we can't do this or that we might not be enough or we're not beautiful enough or that we just needed to have a better group of friends, right? Or a better job or more money. Those things, the stories that we tell each other or we tell ourselves. And it helps us see what is truly there, right? And even if what's truly there is still something that's a work in process, which is true for everybody, it's still you seeing what's really there and you being your most authentic self and loving that self. So bergamot is extremely important. And even just bergamot straight from your bottle, smelling it, putting it on your skin. Be careful, it is a photosensitive oil. Having this in the diffuser, putting it in your perfume blends is gonna be so powerful in helping you love your true self. Not yourself that you want Instagram to see. Not yourself that you maybe show when you're all dressed up and fancy at work or something like that, but your true, true amazing self. The other one that I really like is Cassia. Cassia is kind of one of those hot, spicy oils. It's one of the essential oils in the little tower world that we totally don't give enough um, credit to. It kind of smells like hot baked cinnamon rolls. It's so good. But it helps us dispel fear, fear of whatever. It can be whatever we're fearing in our life and replace it with self-assurance. So if you're thinking about self-love and self-confidence, right? And if you need to have more confidence, and love yourself more and accept yourself for who you are instead of who you might be someday in the far off future or some far off unattainable goal that you've set for yourself and that will be the happiness for you, right? Um, cassia is the oil to grab. And you'll notice that I have a couple blends that I'll share with you in a minute that talk about using cassia and bergamot together. They're a really natural, normal pairing to put together. I love to put those two in the diffuser actually. A couple drops of cassia, a couple drops of bergamot. Do that before I have a challenge coming up in my business or maybe something that scares me a little bit. You know, maybe I'm doing my Elise set of the contacting all of my six, seven, and eights or something like that. I might be a little scared from that prospect, right? I've got all these people that are that are highly qualified to become 
business partners with me. And I want to have as much confidence as I can in reaching out to them. Put your Cassia and your Bergamo in the diffuser for that. Another one that I really like is lemon. Simple, basic lemon, kind of a under and appreciated oil gems in most of our starter kits. And it's what we typically would like to clean our kitchens and our bathrooms with, right? We use it to support our filtering organs. But lemon is also extremely restoring of confidence in ourselves. So when we've reached that place where maybe in all areas we don't feel confident, or maybe it's just one specific area that we've just totally lost confidence in, our confidence in ourselves to be able to be brilliant or capable in this area. Lemon is one of those oils that we can bring in to help dispel that, the stories that we've told ourselves and to bring in some natural self-confidence. And it says um, from the book, Emotions and Essential Oils, which is a book that I get from my life that I absolutely love. It says, while restoring confidence in the self, emotionally lemon, ins lemon inspires a natural playfulness and buoyancy of the heart. And when you're thinking about lacking self-confidence and needing to increase our self-love, what is the most common thing that we hear, right? People who don't have self-confidence, maybe they don't love their self, do they tend to like kind of shudder a little bit? kind of hold themselves back from being playful and happy. We kind of stand on the sidelines, right? Because we don't feel confident or worthy of that situation. Lemon is a really good oil to bring in to be your companion in that situation too. Another one that I really like is patchouli. And patchouli, if people either have a hate or love relationship with, I love patchouli. I love Intune, which is a heavy patchouli blend. And patchouli is to me is a really soothing, grounding, um, essential oil. It's really great to use during yoga. You could use it before or after your bath time. Put it with some Epsom salt in the bathtub while you're doing some body positive affirmations and know that you are worthy while you're using patchouli. But again, from that book, Emotions and Essential Oils, it says patchouli brings confidence in the body as well as grace, poise, and physical strength. And this is the thing that I really like about patchouli. We learn most of our inner dialogue when we're kids, right? Our parents, you know, bless their hearts, regardless if they've tried to do their very, very best. Maybe we grew up in a traumatic home, wherever we fall on that spectrum. Most child behavior specialists agree that even with the most well-intentioned as parents, that kids, regardless if it's a bully at school or first bad work experience or a boyfriend or girlfriend that didn't treat them well, that um, they will learn some inner dialogue that something is healthy, right? That's why it's so important to have a parent that's always increasing their self-confidence. But patchouli helps us, for those of us that maybe didn't have the best experience back when we were kids, it helps us to um, kind of let go of childhood experiences. So if you have a hurt or a wound or a story that you're telling yourself from your childhood, and really most of us do, then that is a really good oil to bring on board to help support yourself with your self-confidence and your self-worth. So let go of that old story from your childhood and to be able to bring in a new true story that you can embrace with your whole self. Um, and that book says, on the deepest level, patchouli assists individuals to feel at peace with themselves, which I think is so important when we're talking about self-love. Okay, and the last one that's kind of a little bit different when we talk about self-love, but it's one of the ones that I think is super important, it's actually Hilichrism. We call it Healy, right? It's our liquid Band-Aid. It stops nosebleeds. It's really great for discomfort and pain within the body. But Hilichrism is actually on the emotional level. It's all about um, creating an atmosphere where emotional wounds that we're still holding on to, or maybe they could be brand new, can heal. So where I think of it as a liquid band-aid for like a cut, right? It could also be a liquid band-aid for those things that we are holding in our hearts, those traumas, those unkind words, someone telling us, well, if you just lost a little bit of weight, right? Or maybe if you just went to the gym more, or maybe if you just dressed a little bit smarter, maybe you had a better network of friends, all of those negative stories that we can kind of come in, someone can tell us, we take them, we internalize them, we encapsulate them into our body and our mind, and then that is a story that we tell ourselves for a really long time if we let it. And Hillocrism is all about creating space for those wounds and also uncovering them too, but creating space for those wounds to be healed. So for that reason, I love it so, so much. And when we're talking about using helichrysum, it's a really precious oil, right? It comes in that little five milliliter bottle. You want to get it with your LRP points with doTERRA, right? It's such a helpful oil to have for so many different things. But when you're using your helichrysum, I love to have just a drop in my hands. I'll take my affirmation, whatever it might be. And we'll talk about affirmations in just a minute. I'll put that helichrysum in my hand, I'll rub my hands together, 
and I will just do as many minutes as I have. Maybe it's 30 seconds, maybe it's five minutes, something like that. I can just do that affirmation, breathing that hilkrism in, letting it do exactly what it's supposed to do and believing that it's gonna do exactly what it should do as far as helping me heal from any emotional wounds that I might have. Now, the other thing I'm gonna mention, even though this is a self-love and confidence video, one thing that we talk about so much and the thing I don't wanna to forget to mention is as a mom, and this is gonna be true for you to apply even if you're not a mom to all different areas of life, um, there's a lot of internalization of failure and not being successful, right, in, in relation to pregnancy and childbirth. And this is something that I've gone through personally. And this applies to all areas of life. But for me personally, I especially experienced it with a second trimester loss, my very first baby, and then lots of complications with my second baby, my oldest, and then some other complications with my third baby. And um, it would have been really easy for me to take those loss and those traumas and those complications and say, oh, maybe I wasn't worthy enough to be a mom. Or maybe my body wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing, right? It wasn't working, right? And there's a lot of women who go through traumatic birth experiences and they create physical wounds, but they also create large emotional wounds. We tell ourselves that maybe we were gonna have a natural birth, but instead we had an emergency C-section. So somehow that's a failure, right? And that's not true at all. But culture and our own expectations and not having support, they kind of set us up for failure in this area. So it's something that a lot of women deal with especially here where I live in Utah, where everybody has children. We talk about it all the time. The mental health of a mother is so dependent on whether or not she perceives her birth experience as positive or not. And then moving forward, if it was perceived as negative, if she's able to heal from it. So helichrism is one of those oils that I really like to employ in my practice when I'm talking about motherhood and ch children and early childbirth fears and those types of things, or a mom who's going to have a second baby and maybe she had a traumatic childbirth to help her know that she is capable, she is able to do these things that she wants to do. She can have a vaginal birth after a cesarean successfully, even if her doctor's saying that it's unlikely. Um, and helichrism is one of those oils that I bring on board to say this is going to be really helpful in healing those wounds surrounding fertility and childbirth. So for those of you that are dealing with that or have a friend in your life that are dealing with um, stories of not having successful fertility or childbirth or wounds surrounding that, one of the best things you can do is get your bo a bottle of helichrism out and use that to help heal those wounds. And know that you are very, very justified in healing those wounds and they can be very real, but you don't have to be stuck with them. So that's my little a little plug for the pregnancy and childbirth bed, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because so many of our wounds are all about that, right? So some other things that I think are really important to talk about when we are dealing with self-love and self-worth. So we have essential oil tools, right? But how do we implement them into our essential oil practice, right? How would we um, start using our bergamot, our rose, our myrrh, those different things to help us heal and have self-confidence? So one of the first biggest, easiest things that you can do, and this is the one thing that I like to do, is so much of what we talk about when self-worth is about how like we speak, right? If we don't feel worthy of something, we don't feel worthy of a person or a situation, or maybe a job promotion or a rank advancement or something like that, our language will tell us what we are worthy of and what we are not. Our things are things that we think about will tell us what we are worthy of and we are not. And people listen, our body listens, the universe listens to those things. The people around us listen to what we're saying, that internal dialogue coming out. So I like to make sure that I'm always having the most confident speech ever. So what I do is I'm gonna take a bottle from doTERRA and I just have this, or not from doTERRA, from Early Life, and I just have one of their multicolored tin pack rollers here. And I love them because they are super, super easy to use. And I'm gonna create a blend for self-confidence speech. And this could be for people who need self-confidence and this could be for people who need to have clear speech for lots of different reasons, whether it be emotional or physical. And so I have my blend and I'm gonna have just some easy fractionated coconut oil from Oil Life, or maybe I like to use their MC2 oil is actually a super good deal and it comes in a reusable glass bottle. If you guys are looking for MCT oil, check out. I think it's called Internal Bliss, or it's called Essential Bliss. It's such a good MCT, but I use it as my carrier oil. And in my bottle, I'm going to put 10 drops of spearmint. Spearmint is oil of confident speech. 
And then I'm going to put 10 drops of lavender, which is also another oil that really just supports confidence and speech efficacy. And that is going to go in my roller, 10 drops of each. And then I want to put that over my throat. And this is literally what I do every single time I get up in front of anyone and speak, do any kind of public speaking, anytime I teach a class, every single time I record a video, every single time, not every single time, but most of the time when I'm doing a live video on my Instagram, I'm making sure that my speech is at its optimal. I want to say the things that are important and I want to leave all of the stories that are not true or maybe not worthy to be speaking in public. Those, those need to stay. So self-confidence is really helpful there with that spearmint and that lavender roller. And then one of the other things that I love to do is to do affirmations with my rollers. So I'll give you guys some roller blinks in a little bit, but the affirmations that I love are things like, um, I acknowledge my own self-worth. My confidence is soaring. And so what I would do is I would take my roller blend for confidence, right? And there's a few different spots that I love to put roller blends for confidence. One of the spots that I love to use it is the back of the neck, kind of a centering position. Oils over the heart space, super centering and supportive of our emotional health. We were just talking about helichrysum for healing emotional wounds. Put that over your heart. Because obviously we may not have a physical heart wound, but our heart space is going to be so important for having those emotional wounds healed. So that's another good spot that I like. For the aromatic benefits of essential oils, I love to put oils on my sternum. That's one of the top places that I put essential oils for emotional benefits. If I'm feeling anxiousness around something or not worthiness around something, or if I need to increase my confidence, my oils are going to go on my sternum. Another spot that I really like to put oils is actually in our elbow creases. So I know that might seem a little bit weird, but right here just in our elbow creases is a really great emotional supportive spot. So putting our roller blends for confidence and to really just have a lot of self-worth there. Another thing I really like about with essential oils to put them is right here on our third eye spot or right here in this nail of our forehead. And this is a really great spot for increasing our own awareness. So if you're maybe using an essential oil to manifest something, right, your big giant goal that maybe you had previously felt that you were unworthy for, you're gonna put an oil or a few blends here, right? Kind of support that manifesting and that innate desire to be able to come to fruition. Another thing that I really like to do is um, when we're talking about self-love and confidence, I think for women and men, but especially women, we already talked about like the pregnancy and childbirth fertility side of things. But if that's not the space that you're in right now, you're not maybe wanting to have a baby or you're past that in your life and you've already had children, um, we can hold a lot of body shame around a lot of different things, not just pregnancy and childbirth and fertility, but also around things like our body shape or our body size. We live in, if you're especially if you're in America, we live in a culture that says that we should be a very specific model, right? We should be a very specific pant size. And the culture has just reaffirmed these things for us for years and years and years. And we look at history and we know that body sizes and what was considered beautiful has been very, very subjective. But we don't live in history. We live in the here and now. And what's being publicized right now is a photoshopped body that is a standard that is so unrealistic that no one could ever hope to achieve it. Obviously the supermodels haven't even achieved it because they're still being photoshopped. But that is the story that we're being told. We still see those pictures. We still see the beautiful posed photos on Instagram. And it's hard to know what is reality and what's not, right? It's hard to know what we should be comparing ourselves. And the easy answer is we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to anyone. But it's human nature to say, well, that person has this and I don't. So maybe if I had that, I would be happier, right? So one of the things that I've combated and done in my own life that has been really helpful, especially post-children, but in any kind of life, this would be extremely helpful, is to do, it's called aromatic dressing. And it's actually something that I learned about and kind of took two different thoughts together, right? I wanted to use essential oils to kind of anoint or dress certain parts of my body that I maybe wasn't doing a great job of loving, right? Maybe I didn't love my love handles as much as I should have, or my thighs weren't, you know, exactly getting all the love. Maybe they were getting a little bit of, um, you know, I really wish you were a little bit smaller, a little bit less flubby when I thought about them. So what I would start doing is I would do my oils, right? And so I would take maybe some oils that were really supportive to body image and grab those. And I would grab my fractionated coconut oil and I would maybe put like five drops of each oil in just a little tiny basin or a little bowl. It doesn't have to be fancy. 
do a few squirts of my fractionated coconut oil. I usually grab things like rose, hilichrysum. Those are really soothing for our skin. And then add a little bit of bergamot. Uh, myrrh is a really good one to use. Peppermint is a really invigorating one. Grapefruit is super awesome to put in with uh, aromatic dressing. And then I'm going to get all of those benefits of the essential oils being used topically, right? Which actually does have real skin benefits. But then I'm going to put them on my body and say very specific things. And the one thing that I like to say, and this is from Denise Duffield Thomas, and she says that we need to forgive ourselves before we can move on and we can manifest our dreams and have true self-confidence and self-love. And I totally agree with that because when we start forgiving ourselves, we can release those wounds. We can release those stories that are holding us back and we can reach that next level, whatever it might be for whatever our goal is. So, you know, let's just say theoretically, I really didn't like my shoulders, right? And I thought that they were just too broad and they've bugged me since I was a kid. Not true. There's other parts of my body that maybe cause some shame in the past, but I would take my oils and I would put it on my shoulder and I would be, you know, I love you and I forgive you and thank you for everything that you've provided me. And then I would going on to the next part of my body. And what this does is it really consciously allows us to release that body shame that we might be holding. And we all have body shame. Men are told the same story that women are, that they should be buff and handsome and dark, right? There's lots of stories that media tells us and culture tells us about how men and women should look. And the reality is, is most people fall outside of those stories because most people aren't supermodels, right? Most people aren't being photoshopped on the front of magazines or they have, you know, their perfectly poised Instagram or their Facebook photos that have been photoshopped and edited to just look absolutely magical. There's nothing wrong with those things as long as you realize that they're not reality. They're not everyday reality. And doing the aromatic dressing helps us release that shame that we might be holding about, maybe it's our whole entire body, maybe it's just certain parts. But not only do you get those side benefits of actual health benefits of doing this, but it can really help you release those things. So back in the day when I was really struggling with my body image, I wanted to maybe lose weight or have less stress marks or those types of things. I would do this pretty consistently, maybe five or six times a week, take a shower, get up first thing in the morning, do it right before bedtime. Do it in a time where you can have some really intentional space to think about that body part that you may have been shaving or feeling shame about for a really long time. And just really, truly mean that behind you. You're gonna mean that you forgive your thighs for being dimpled when they, maybe you didn't want them to be. Or you're gonna forgive your stomach for no longer being flat after carrying babies. Or you're gonna forgive your legs for not being as long as maybe you wanted them to be. And you continue to do this process because we hold layers upon layers of stories and lies and shame in our body, right? Kind of like an onion, you have to peel back those layers. So you can't just do it once and expect amazing results, but you're gonna continue to do it until you truly believe what you're telling yourself, that you truly do love yourself and you truly have forgiven yourself and you're ready to move on. And yourself is going to be the most capable, the most powerful and serve you so well moving forward. And I think of all the things that I've done for self-love and confidence, allowing me to move forward to the next stage, to believe I'm worthy of the next thing or the thing that I really want in the moment is this right here. This, the work of forgiving our body and releasing that shame that we hold is so, so important for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a mom, a guy, whatever. It's so important. And it doesn't matter how old you are either. So if you're listening to this and you're 18, you absolutely can start doing this. If you're listening to this and you're 75, you absolutely can start. But it's never too late to start forgiving that internal shame that we hold, those internal expectations that maybe aren't realistic about certain parts of our body or our body as whole. Well. So that is called aromatic dressing. There's lots of information about it online, lots of different ways to do it. That's just my personal preference. Oils, forgiveness, saying you're going to work with your body and you want to move forward and you love it. That's the key points to remember. The affirmation isn't super, super important, but um, it's that just that you're thinking your body and moving forward with it. So I think that's really important. The other thing that I really like is to, when I'm putting on my oils, is to do something like, I am capable and worthy of what today will bring me. 
and I am open to what the universe has for me. Or if you are not a big fan of the universe, you could say I am capable and willing to receive the blessings that today has for me. That's another thing that will really just help you increase your confidence when you're using the oils to help you move forward in the day and just be willing and able and open to receive whatever it is, that energy, that blessing, that abundance for your day, for your confidence. So let's talk a little bit about um, roller blends. And what I decided to do, Courtney, I did not run this by you first, but what I'm going to do is actually do a post about these roller blends. I don't know how any other way to actually give them to you. Um, maybe I'll give that post to Oil Life and they can have it set up with the video once they upload it. But I'll make sure that you guys can go to my Instagram and look at the post tonight. So it'll be there around no later than like 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You can look at it. It's going to talk about all the different things that we just talked about today. Those self-love, those confidence, all of those things. And you'll have that. And you can save it to your Instagram or you can screenshot it so you have those recipes. So the first one that I'll tell you really fast is just a lovely roller recipe. You can use it for all different things. You could use it as the aromatic dressing part. You can use it just as self-confidence in general. It's a general kind of everything oil. So it's eight drops of wild orange, bergamot, and wild and rose. And for those of you that always ask me, yes, I pop off the roller top for my rose. I don't have my rose bottle with me today. And I'm going to show you guys how you would do it really fast. So let's pretend that this lovely bottle here is rose, right? And I actually have this really cool um, little orifice reducer or popper offer called Miracle Tool. It's spelled like Mer, super clever, super cheap. It's from Oil Life. And I love it. I've had so many different bottle opener tools out there and I've never loved them, but this one's actually really helpful. So you take your rose bottle and you just pop it off right like this. The tool just slips underneath the cap, super easy. Put your hand on top of it so you don't send your rose ruler flying across the house and pop it out. And then you can either pour eight drops of your rose onto your ruler and fill it up with fractionated coconut oil or you can use a little pipette or a little dropper. However you want to do that, super easy, eight drops, put it in your ruler. It doesn't matter that it already has fractionated coconut oil on it. It's exactly what you need for the recipe. So if you see recipes that call for something that's already in a roller and already diluted, you just do it exactly like that. Super easy. So lovely roller recipe, wild orange, rose, bergamot, and eight drops of those. I have one that I love. So we talked a lot about childbirth, pregnancy, but this is going to be good for women in general. It's called the Confident Mama Roller, and it's 10 drops of peppermint, bergamot, patchouli, lemon, and lang lang. Lang lang is another oil that I love for helping us increase love and awareness of our sexuality in our body. Um, another one that we already talked about is Confident Speech. That's 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of lemon. Apply it over the throat anytime you want Confident Speech, anytime you're sending your child off to speech therapy, anytime you have to get up and present a job proposal in front of your boss, you want to make sure that your voice is heard and as confident as possible. That's a really good ruler. And then I love my body is 10 drops of, I keep my ruler recipes really simple. So it's bergamot, lavender, myrrh, patchouli, and rose. It's such a beautiful blend. It smells seriously so good, you guys. You have to make it. So I'll put those up on my Instagram. Oh, and there's one more I want to tell you about. So we talked about helichrysum for healing wounds. So if you're in the sphere of wanting to increase self-confidence, and body love, but you know that you have wounds from whatever. Maybe a boyfriend told you a story that you've been carrying around. Maybe you did have a traumatic birth experience, or your mom told you something that has really just stuck with you. You can grab five drops of helichrysum, five drops of frankincense, it's three drops of myrrh, and two drops of peppermint. And I have the peppermint in there because peppermint increases the buoyancy of our heart, which is really important when we're doing that work of self-love and self-healing. And those also in a 10 milliliter bottle with some pressure and coconut oil, apply it over the heart space, apply it over your sternum, do your affirmations, use it during your aromatic dressing. It is such a good blend for gently soothing our heart when we feel heavy or burdened or we have something we know that we want to do the hard work of healing on. So those will be up on my Instagram. I'm gonna go ahead and I was gonna do Q&A, but it doesn't look like there's a whole ton of people on. So what we'll do is you guys can always message me on Instagram, put a comment up on this video on Vimeo once Courtney and Oil Life has had it loaded. I'll make sure I check those out so we can chat about anything you have questions with. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. But like I said, um, essentially joyful. The post will be up tonight. 
with the lower blends. They're super, super lovely blends that I've used in all areas of my life and given to my best friends who I want to have them have tools for their emotional wealth and healing. So they're things that have been tested, tried and true that are beautiful. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate your time so much. Bye.